Ew. Could be run out. Oh, oh shit. to welcome back Gary with the news that thanks to Mark Lawrenson you're now 3-1 down in the series okay <laughs> with Gary and Rory is an impressionist who recently posed naked to publicize his Channel 4 show everyone congratulated him on his Robin Cook impression until they realized they were looking at the wrong bit <laughs> <laughs> David and Jonathan is a West Indian cricket legend who once captained a side that beat David Gower's England 5-0. Although, <laughs> admittedly, that hardly narrows it down. <laughs> Clive Lloyd. <laughs> we open proceedings with the excuses round. David, Jonathan and Clive, it's cricket for you and the new record holder for the most ever test wickets. West Indies fast bowler Courtney Walsh. is now Test Cricket's leading wicket-taker. The West Indians surround him on the field. Now, Courtney's been bowling for the Windies since the early 80s when he was just a young kid, a green fourth-choice seamer who was expected to prove easy pickings for the world's top batsman. It's Arthurton, the substitute fielder, and Gower's gone. Well, I don't think I've ever seen David Gower out on the miss hook. And David Gower will be really cross with himself. And that really is a bit of a chuck away. <laughs> now, like everyone else, Courtney Walsh wears a box while batting, but unlike everyone else, he wears a box at all other times too. So why? Before, before we answer that, can I just take a second to introduce my uh, team members to one another? Um, Clive, uh, I'd like to meet David Gower. <laughs> I know you've probably played against each other, but Clive, it's always over so quickly. I don't think you really had a chance to meet David. Right? <laughs> yes. Do you miss playing uh, cricket at the, the very top level, Clive? No, not really, no. Oh. I'm, I, can, I can sleep better now, it's all right. Yeah. Do you miss playing cricket at, at David's level? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. They never got their money's worth, the people, because we finished in, you know, in three days. But David was a terrific player. <laughs> Funny, and he is. <laughs> <laughs> the trick is not to be nice to me in here. It's all right. No, well, I have to because <laughs> I, you know, I'm, only, I'm, I'm speaking the truth. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've come out without, without cash again. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a surprise. I'm sorry, I completely forgot. What was the question again? Why does Courtney Walsh wear a box at all times? You're asking us to stoop to the level of some cock jokes. <laughs> Something we fight hard to avoid every week That's on this programme. <laughs> I'm sitting next to one of the greatest cricketers in the world. David, lean back. I'm sitting next to one of the greatest cricketers in the world. And you're asking me about boxes. But is it true, I've heard that sometimes in cricket you used to get the lady fans used to write in and ask for the boxes to be autographed and send out as mementos. Oh, yeah, some of them. Yeah. yeah. And I hear David once got a D on his. He managed to get the whole D. <laughs> like, the whole of the letter D. Like a capital D as well, not just a small bit, because David has his box made by Fabergé. <laughs> it opens up, there's a little dancing girl, she spins round to the Nutcracker Suite. <laughs> I tell you, it's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Yeah, it might not be that big, but the jewels are worth a bit, you know. It's, it's a question of status. <laughs> you must have quite a few old boxes knocking around. What do, you, what do you do with the old boxes? Do you use them? Well, some of them are ended up as ashtrays. <laughs> when David entertains at his, uh, at his palatial home in Hampshire, he's known locally as the ambassador. And when he entertains, he uses his old boxes to serve those, you know those fancy Italian chocolates, the little round ones? <laughs> Them Do you mean the Ferrero Rocher? Yeah, yeah they're the ones. <laughs> <laughs> the chocolates, I call them. I could say if I wanted to. I 
I just don't feel the need to prove anything right now. It's a good job they're not rum and raisin, isn't it? <laughs> I like a forever wash. I'll the next one. <laughs> I just, I just can't get someone else to buy them for me. <laughs> a bigger boy. <laughs> Is it something to do with West Indies outfields being sort of rough and all the rest of it, so that whenever you're in the field in the West Indies, you get a nasty bounce? I mean, it's just, it's just common sense protects what's there. I'll give you three points for that. You're going to need it for a long time. Yeah, three points. <laughs> Yes, it all dates back to Walsh's childhood. Here's his Gloucestershire colleague, England's Jack Russell, to explain. He told me that when he grew up in the West Indies, the outfields were very, very bumpy, and that made life very difficult for fielding. And rather than getting hit in the crown jewels, he preferred to protect himself by wearing a box. Courtney has now joined an elite club of bowlers with 400 test wickets, along with Sir Richard Hadley and Kapil Dev. Curiously, eight out of the top ten bowlers ever took their wickets during the 80s, or as they're known to bowlers, the golden years of Gower. <laughs> <laughs> Walsh is one of the few cricketers in the world to have a school named after him, the Courtney Walsh Oval in Kingston, Jamaica. In this country, of course, there are plans for the Phil Tufnell High. <laughs> Now, with Saturday's Cup final in mind, Gary's team, it's the Chelsea manager and, until recently, player Gianluca Viali. Here he is, grabbing a brace against Oldham in the Cup last year. Tom, he's presented the ball to Gianluca Viali, and he's certainly made to pay for that error. So Beck has Viali up, and Viali scores! Now, Viali announced his retirement from playing at the end of last season, but has now changed his mind and re-registered himself as a player. So why? I've just re-registered. Have you? As, as a player? team captain on here. Yeah. Because they didn't let me do it last week. I was only five minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't the same without me either, was it? No. No, it was great fun. It was yeah. funny. <laughs> didn't, uh, didn't Lester Piggott re-register? Or was that for VAT? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Boycott's going to re-register. The British Boxing Board of Control. <laughs> Laurie, can you do a Jonathan impression? Uh, no, I, I, can't, I can't do a Jonathan, but I can do a Lugo. <laughs> uh, apparently. No, it wasn't. I was getting a lot of criticism for the England side when I was captain. <laughs> I, think, I think it's fair to say that I never said we'd be a great one-day side. I said we'd be a great side one day. <laughs> <laughs> so Bialy is what? Re-registered as a player, yeah. is that right? Mm. Yeah. Did he, did he want to smash Chris Sutton's goal-scoring record? <laughs> <laughs> Even George Best's liver has performed better than Chris Sutton this year. <laughs> <laughs> he found a way of getting two contracts, one as a manager and one as a player. Nope, that's not what, what we're looking for, no. The reason, rather bizarrely, is that he actually oh, likes being kicked. In a recent interview, he said, The feeling of getting kicked is something you might miss. It's a physical game and it makes you feel like a man. A sore ankle, a swollen knee or a bruise makes you feel alive. Well, he doesn't need to play football for that. He could just go out on the town with Dennis Wise. <laughs> the San Lorenzo restaurant in Knightsbridge has named a pasta after the Chelsea manager called Penne alla Viali. It's normally followed by the Chris Sutton, a very expensive pudding. <laughs> At the end of that round, Gary's team have no points and David's team have three. Over, and it nearly is. And when it is, we'll be joining Parky for more lovey-dovey celebrity chat. Before that, back to Rory and Nick. Move on to our photo opportunities round. Now, every picture tells a story, and we'd like to know what stories lie behind ours. Gary's team, staying with the cup final, how do you explain this snapshot of Aston Villa's Paul Merson? That's Merce um, asking the operator a line, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> Is he an ill advised phone a friend on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> It'd be great, wouldn't it? Chris Tarrant, the other one. <laughs> OK, Paul. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, next the next voice you hear will be in your head. <laughs> Spooky, isn't it? Just like being in the room with Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> Gary? What? <laughs> Doing anything tonight? <laughs> Doesn't seem like it, does it? <laughs> Is it when, um... John Gregory. John Gregory was banned from the touchline. <coughs> yeah. And while during the ban, Villa performed better, and he decided to stay in the terrace. 
Very good. Three points. Yes. Well done. The answer is that when the Aston Villa manager John Gregory was suspended from the dugout and forced to sit in the stand, the team's form improved dramatically. So much so that he decided to stay there. So from now on, he has to communicate with his players by pitch side phone. In February, an avalanche trapped Paul Merson and his wife in their Swiss chalet under hundreds of tons of powdery snow. But luckily, he managed to snort his way to the surface. <laughs> Incidentally, I think for a man who spent so much time leaning over a mirror, you'd have thought he'd get his teeth fixed. <laughs> Dave's teeth, clap your eyes on this. <laughs> so, how do you account for that? Could it be a remake of Driving Miss Daisy? <laughs> Good news to see they've recommissioned Queer as Folk. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not that way myself, but I thought it was a fine slice of drama. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Gary. Gary, speaking of pictures, though, look at this. I mm. found this. A, a child gave me this. Look at his face, the fear, as he goes for that ball there. Can you see that? <laughs> well, it, it just so happens that oh, a friend of mine... You know what? I was Shut just... up! <laughs> oh, don't yeah, you? Ooh. A friend of mine was yeah. in a phone box the other day, yeah. and he found this. <laughs> Do you know what? I'm not ashamed. I called this bloke <laughs> and he couldn't get his tongue around his arse. <laughs> what we really want to know is, did he manage to get both your bollocks in his mouth? <laughs> I just want to know you got your money's worth, mate. <laughs> so you send, let me get so you send your mates out to go around phone booths. <laughs> For you. <laughs> Gary, can I just ask you on a personal note? Yes. Is there nothing you won't do? Look at that. <laughs> you almost fooled me. You've got to start drawing the line somewhere. I've heard mm. told that if you phone Gary's house now and you get Michelle on the answer phone, she goes, Hello, it's Michelle Lineker here. I'm out for a drink with Neil Morrissey. If you need me, <laughs> just, just fine. you can get me on my mobile. If it's for Gary about work, the answer's yes. <laughs> Des did a good job at the BAFTAs uh, at the weekend. I think hats off to Des. He did a pretty good ho job hosting that. And, of course, Gary, I know you're following in his footsteps. So best of luck for you this week with the Underfloor Lagging Enthusiast Award at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> we wish you the very best. Yeah. I know what this is, I think. Well, this well. is uh, Walker's uh, uh, launching their new um, mint-flavoured crisps. <laughs> <laughs> Bad idea. No. Nope. Any no. more ideas? Uh, no. Any it's ideas? Not it? Well, I can't yes. really ask you. Yes. Go it. on, then. Um, it was a campaign to discourage football fans from drinking and driving. I'll be the designated driver. Yep, so well done. Gary remembers something that he did. Hi. One point. Yeah. 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 I take it all back. Yeah. It's I would like to officially apologise to you. I take it all back. Cursed by nature as you are, you've risen above <laughs> your grotesque looks and your limited talent to be a credit to society. <laughs> Gary's been described as the Queen Mother of football, which is terribly unfair, because at least she's prepared to tackle back occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, oh. David's team have three points and Gary's team have four. <laughs> it's our What's Going On round now. David's team, a highly unusual sport for you. So, what sport do you think that was? Live from East Anglia, it's Blind Date. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say how nice it is to see top-class motorsport on the BBC again? <laughs> <laughs> Danish Meals and Wheels? <laughs> That'd be a very lazy Meals on Wheels service, wouldn't it? They'd just bring a pig round and say, go on, cook it yourself, you old... <laughs> I saw a video once called Animal Farm. Some of you have seen it. <laughs> he was in it. <laughs> That's it. Two legs good, three legs better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and it's most alarming. <laughs> what some people do for cash. And they're going. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's going on there. That's Jerry Halliwell is auditioning a new chauffeur. <laughs> Well, the rules are pretty simple, aren't they? It's just sort of grab a pig. It's got to be one hand on the pig, that's all. You only allowed one hand on the wheel. The, the type of car? Is it like a communal Ford, wedding? Ford, Ford, yeah, Ford, 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 Ford. I'll give you three points for that, yeah. <laughs> yes, that was the noble sport of pigs and Fords from the state of Oregon. The rules are simple. You grab a greased pig and carry it in a Model T Ford for one lap. Swap it for another grease pig, drive round again, and so on for three laps. The lucky winner gets to grab a grease pig and drive off into the night. It's basically the same as a night out in Romford, only classier. <laughs> the world's biggest pig is Big Bill, who weighs in at 2,552 pounds and is so old and fat he can barely stand. Brian Robson has put in a bid for 15 million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team, it's football for you. Into the third minute of stoppage time. Oh, what a wonderful strike by Owen. Ferguson with the free kick. And Roberts rises well to find a gap on the near post. It's 2-1 to Wrexham. So, Gary's team, what was going on there? Yeah. Is that the one where the shit hit the fan? <laughs> <laughs> Were they trying to keep the flies off the pies? <laughs> <laughs> no I think it's an acronym because Plymouth Argyle um, wave their pants and it's an acronym. Do you know what an acronym is, Gary? Yeah. It's like that building in Greece, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> an acronym, uh, you know, when the letters stand for a word, it means Plymouth Argyle notoriously terrific supporters. And I think, because uh, Cambridge United have something similar. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't hold up pants. <laughs> what do they hold up for? They haven't thought of anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> Will you call me when they do? <laughs> <laughs> Will they hold you up, Donovan? Available. <laughs> hey, Rory B, imagine John Watson commentating on that match. Well, interestingly enough, I think actually he'd be quite embarrassed, funnily enough, because actually those, <laughs> no, those pants were actually pre-1993. <laughs> when they actually put viscose in, because actually otherwise they'd fall down, because they have a very large terrain content. <laughs> very much so, actually, I have to say. <laughs> were they playing West Ham? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. Uh, it's at Reading, and I think um, they, they, these supporters started holding up pants, which stood for they are pants. players are not trying sufficiently. Correct, for three points. Well, well done. done. Yes, that was all part of Pants Day, organised by Reading fans in December, when the team was fighting against relegation, because the team were indeed playing pants. It's not clear what happened to all those used pants, but next time you're in the club shop, whatever happens, don't buy the official club face flannel. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of that round, David's team have six points, and Gary's team have seven. <laughs> It's time once again for our regulars to claw a sporting colossus as we play Field the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're first this week. I'd like to take your positions. You have 90 seconds to work out who's come between you. Can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK. <laughs> And your time starts now. <laughs> oh, I say. <laughs> Actually, you know, I've never tried it. Um, Jonathan, have you ever... No. <laughs> oh, hang on, what's this? Hello? <laughs> I was going to say it was Joe Jury and Virginia Wade, but... <laughs> <laughs> I still might. Oh. <laughs> Is that you? It's, it's a, it's oh, a short bloke, it's a jockey. I reckon. <laughs> What's the, oh, hello, there's a bloke with his head up somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> Are they holding anything? What's what we got here? <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> no, it's failed the drugs test. Hasn't got any. <laughs> <laughs> Too much gel, Roy. This bloke's changed his hairstyle since I last. <laughs> rugby ball. Rugby players. There's somebody stupid. It's rugby league. Rugby mm -hmm. league. Do you know any rugby league players? Not many. Um, 
you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you have two? Perhaps they're twins. Oh. <laughs> oh it must United. be the, um, the Paul brothers then. First name? You didn't know their first name, <laughs> did you? <laughs> Knew one of them. Which one? Rory. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jonathan and David, positions please. I must wait on. Wasn't there a third brother called Lindsay DePaul? Right. <laughs> 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 I'm blowing my hair out, David. What do you think? Should I keep it long? Oh, sorry, wrong blood to ask. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mystery guest, please. <laughs> now, my advice to you, Jonathan, is really go for it, mate. <laughs> Time starts now. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Jonathan, what's that? How <laughs> I... It's like someone's carrying a pig on his shoulder. <laughs> what is it? That's what is that? <laughs> what is this? That's an arm! <laughs> what sort of arm is this? <laughs> this is too big to be an arm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't hold hands with him. Come on. How far away are you? Is it Venus it... Williams? Go <laughs> <laughs> well, man, I tell you what, though, he's a big fella. <laughs> this is a bloke. Well, I think it's a bloke. I hope it's a bloke. <laughs> oh, he's a horse standing on his hind legs. I don't know. <laughs> he's what's, a big what's bloke, what's got big chest and shoulders, big neck. I'm not going. It's only a neck. Who's that guy? William. <laughs> I tell you, I don't know what it is, but you lifted me up then. I was so surprised I farted on your head. <laughs> he just, he just snuck out. I didn't expect it. It just came out. <laughs> so I apologise, obviously. <laughs> That's what it is, but you're a big. <laughs> is your surname <laughs> shit out, baby? It must be a long time since anybody's picked you up, Jonathan. <laughs> Last time was the Bastards when Dale Winton was out. <laughs> I've no idea. He's, he's a, well, is it a wrestler or a weightlifter? weightlifter. Go for his title. The uh, world's strongest world weightlifter, Super Tech. World's strongest. <laughs> world's strongest man. Correct! Oh, thank it's God. Glenn Ross. Whoa. Well done. Thank you for that. I think I speak for everyone when I say, next time, Glenn, finish the job, won't you? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, <laughs> David's team have nine <laughs> points and Gary's oh, team coming. have ten. What's his name again? Uh, Glenn. Glenn and Ross. Glenn Ross. No relation, then? Yeah, obviously I've we're related. I've just discovered. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me? <laughs> So you reckon you could have taken him, eh? I don't think I could have taken him. I could have taken him out for a nice drink, maybe. Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we complete matters by playing the name game. The leaders goes first, which is Gary's team. Pass those on to Rory, please. Rory. Can I read them first? No, no, no. As many names as you can in 90 <coughs> seconds, and your time starts now. Uh, Yorkshire boxer, cricketer, sorry. Uh, boycott. Boycott. Jeffrey Boycott. Yeah, very good. Um, Chelsea uh, coach likes young girls. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but don't we all? Hey ho, <laughs> hey ho, meet the 
Flintstone. Yeah, very similar to that. Cricketer. Flintoff? Yeah, first yeah. name. Oh, Andrew. Andrew. Fantastic, eh? This guy, Royal House of Scotland is called the... I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Stuart. Stuart, yeah. Um, what's a um, big animal that uh, jockeys go on the back of? Oh, a horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if a horse pisses, there's a big... <laughs> pool, 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 yeah. Stuart Horse Pool. Pool. Very good. <laughs> okay. Nice oh. easy one for you here. Well, which one? <laughs> uh, a character from Julius Caesar. Pardon me, O oh, bleeding piece of earth, that I am meek and gentle with these butchers. Waste on you. <laughs> Mark Anthony, very good indeed. <laughs> ah, now this, if this guy had a saint in front of his name, he would have been the first Archbishop of Canterbury sent by Pope Gregory I in 596 AD. This, uh, I'm wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, um, the eighth month is called... August. August. Augustus. It, no, if you put I-N-E on the end August. of that. August. August, very good. Actress called Foster has the same Christian name as this. Jodie. Jody. And uh, former um, assistant manager of... No, 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 of Manchester United, Brian. Kid. Very good. Jodie. She's not for Criminal Investigation <laughs> Department. C-I-D. Sid. Yeah, Sid, very good. Here's another one just for you, Gary. <laughs> so, you've moved on to 1810. We'll win it for you. Ten, easy. Bring it yeah. this way. What's the to Jonathan? Clive, I don't know if you're familiar with the show, but this is my strongest round, and normally... <laughs> <coughs> Just don't listen to David. Wish we could say the same. <laughs> Your time starts now, enjoy. Right. Uh, he's a West it's... Indian batsman. Uh, when Cilla Black says a lot or something, like a lot, a lot of laughs, she says... Brian, hey. Brian Lara. That's right. it, yeah. OK, uh, this is a Man United <laughs> footballer. Uh, if you want a chocolate bar, a big chunky chocolate bar, you would have a... Dwight York. There you go. Um, <laughs> this is... He sounds like a ska singer. He's, uh, he's a West Indian <laughs> all-rounder. He's, um, if you're not drunk, then you are... So well, yeah, yeah, you got it's it. Girl, All right, it's an American guy. I think he's a wrestler. Um, <laughs> the Kurt Cobain from Nirvana. I know you like him. She was, he was married to Courtney Love. Right. Yeah. Well, well done. And the first name. Hey. If you're an American guy, a geezer, you'd be a bit of a Aerosmith oh, wrote no. a song. Looks like a lady. Oh, no. no, he's lost us. Yeah, it's like. Um, <laughs> uh, um, you know what uh, Peter Cook's partner's name was? Dudley Moore. And if you take the first part of his first name. <laughs> Dad. And if you put an E on the end, <laughs> start. Dude, dude, dude. dude, well done, there you go, okay. Right. If you're watching Where Frankie you this is a, uh, another Windy's Cricket. If you're watching Frankie Howard up Pompeii and he was talking about the opposite to the front, he'd go, it's not the frontus, oh no, it's, it's the, 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 the backus. Backus. there you go. Uh, oh, there you go. <laughs> this one, the first, the first name, it's like a tangerine, but it's not a tangerine. I'm not quite sure what the difference between this and a tangerine is. I think a tangerine is like e easier to peel. And I think the tangerine's the one that has the pips. I think this one doesn't have the pips. You correct me if I'm wrong after them. <laughs> but it's just like the orange family. Bigger than a kumquat, right? <laughs> not, not a tangerine. <laughs> Lovely as ever. You moved on to 14 points, but this week's winners are Gary's team with 18. David, Jonathan and Clive, Gary, Rory and Rory. We're all off to persuade Gary to get back into football by giving him a good kicking. <laughs> they think it's all over. It is now. Next tonight on UK TV G2, the Silver Fox Parkinson chats for your pleasure with Robbie Williams. And for those who like to laugh in a vacuum tomorrow at 10, the Red Dwarf flies on UK TV G2. See you after this and these, or at least you'll see us.